Welcome back to another Shotcut video editing tutorial. In this video, we're going to talk about the keyframes feature. Uh, so adding keyframes, this is getting starting to touch on maybe animation or making things change effects and filters at different points of the video. So to get started, we're going to drag in this video clip to our timeline. And some different filters have can be keyframed and some can't. In the last video, we talked a little bit about text. So when we add text on, like if we add text, uh, we click on video, go down to text. So we have our different text here. Let me say my text. So this has some options for when we click on keyframe. It has some options for when it first appears. If we that's this green start. So if we play our video here, it won't appear until it gets to that point in time. And if we want to go to the end of this and have it only be on for a short amount of time, we just bring it to here. So this is all happening on this keyframes tab, not on the timeline tab. If you're wondering where that green and start end is, if we come here to the end, it just shortens the length of the video. So under keyframes is where we get to this red and green with these little black circles. But this will put the text on the video just for a short time, and then it goes off. And if we're doing, um, if we zoom in here, if we have any effect to this, this is where it kind of changes maybe the position. So this is actually, right now it's the same because nothing has changed. But we could do it, so by this point, one thing we could do is change the color. So if we change the color and go to red, it's going to be red at this point, but since we didn't change it at the beginning, maybe that part's not keyframable. Oh, it's not. So the text color, I guess, is not keyframable, unfortunately. And the reason we can tell that is there's no icon right here to the side of it that says it's keyframable. So the only thing that's keyframable of this text is the position of it. And the size isn't, the where it's at, the justification isn't, the text itself isn't, just the position is. And if we hover over, this says use keyframes for this parameter. So that just tells us that it's able to be keyframable. So what we could do now is move this um, up to like here. And what that'll do is it'll start down here, it'll appear, and then it'll move, but it's not working properly. It moved the text box, but it's not moving the text. Super annoying. But at least we're learning what's happening, <laughs> sort of. Let's get rid of this one altogether. Because a better example is if we do, maybe let's do another effect like blur. I think blur is keyframable. Yeah, so we see it has this little icon to the side of it use keyframes. So we could click this, we're going to do that in a second, but for now we can just go uh, to the keyframes on it and we can just use this little slide out. So it's going to start with these settings and by the time we get to here we can change these settings, we can make it really blurry. Let's do this. So that should adjust and start out not very blurry and then gradually get blurry. We probably want to do that the other way around. So it gets more and more blurry then it just stays blurry. So if we wanted to, in, to do that the other way around, we just reset this to how it was, we go to the beginning, and then we make it more blurry to start with. Now it'll come into focus as we play. So that's just using the basic rudimentary. This doesn't really, it really gives us two keyframes, one at the beginning, and then one wherever this circle is. It's a really it's kind of an easy, user-friendly way to do it, but it doesn't give us a lot of control because there's only two keyframes. The keyframe means we can't change anything in between here. We can't adjust and change the blurriness right here. We can only change it right at this point of the circle or at the very beginning of the clip. Okay, I've loaded in a new video clip. I'm going to show you the more advanced way of doing keyframes in Shotcut. I don't have any filters applied to this right now, but while it's selected, we'll apply a filter. We could do the blur again, but really any filter that has this keyframe icon, this little icon that says use keyframes for this parameter, this tells us that we can use these. So what, what this does is it'll actually change uh, the coloring of the clip here. And so we can click down here, and all of a sudden it creates this mid-tones gamma, which matches this, and we see this is highlighted in blue. So now any changes we make here will be applied to this clip. And it, it put a little dot at the point we were at whenever when we clicked that. So if we come to a new point, um, while we're here on the keyframes, and we can make an adjustment to this. So now we make it sort of this red. 
What we see down here, well, let's make it blue just so we're not confused. There's this little red um, node. This is a keyframe at this point. There's another keyframe at the beginning, so we see there's two. So this is essentially what we were doing last time, where it's going to it's going to fade, it's going to slowly apply. We see that's happening. See, so look up here on on the actual color wheel. We see that dot just moving by itself, and then when it gets to that point, it'll just stop. If we want it to go to a different color, we can come to whatever point we want, and we can move it down to maybe like this green. And now it's going to fade to that, so it'll fade to this color, then it'll fade over to this more green. And then it just stays at, at that last one. And if we want it to go back to how it was originally, we just move it back to the middle. And now we have these, so we have these different key frames. We, we've now set four key frames just for the midtones. So all it's doing is, is doing the midtones. Maybe we want to add in another one. We can click this one here, this highlights, and that'll create, oh, let's not do the highlights. Let's, let's click it, click yes, so we won't do that one. Instead, let's do a different Let's do, um, well, we can do, I guess we'll do the blur since we had that one up before. Because the blur has two different ones as well, width and height. So under blur, we can add a keyframe in starting right here. And it'll show us the width. And then we can come again to here and uh, make an adjustment to that. Oh, this one, there we go. So now we have it blurred there. And then we come back down to this point and go reset. And so now it's going to blur, but it's also still applying those colors. It gets really blurry up at this point here, and then it goes back down to be not blurred and back to the normal colors. So we have two different um, filters applied, but we need to click on them to see. So this one has shows the midtones, this one shows the blur, but they're each on their own. And so unless it's selected, we're not going to see which one there is. Does that make sense? Um, but I guess we could do this one. So we could up these ones we can apply and have three different ones as long as it's on the same filter. When we go to a new filter, it doesn't show. So we can't see width on the same keyframes tab, I guess you could say, as these different colors. But we can color these and add these, and they're going to be all their own separate ones. And so we get all these different kinds of adjustments happening here. And then we just see some craziness going on with coloring. And also with, in a second, it'll, it should blur here. Yeah, so we go into blur. Does that make sense what's going on? If you've never used keyframes before, it can be confusing. If you have used keyframes, you, you should be pretty familiar with what's going on here. These ones are just setting, since there's so many data points, these ones are just setting the actual point. Whereas this one is actually showing the level. So we can, instead of clicking up here under width, we can actually click the node now. And we can take that blur up or down. So this, this line is representing the intensity, whereas the other one wasn't. We can do the height on this one too. So if we add in height, and we go to this point, and just make some sort of a change, and then come here. So now we're adding in a, a few different things. So now we have two. We're adjusting this height and this width. If you watch these bars as I play, these bars are slowly changing you know, back and forth to do some interesting types of things. Uh, so any filter that you find, any filter at all, that has uh, the, the audio, so we have this um, gain and volume is key frameable. So we could, we could apply a, an adjustment to the volume and have it be a different volume level at one point than at another point. Um, we can apply a lot of these, a lot of the different effects, just look at um, to see if they have it. So sharpen is going to have it. Most of the effects are going to have these icons. So play around with those. Hopefully you found this video informative. Um, really experience and just playing and seeing what happens when you apply different keyframes and changing them is what's really going to help you learn uh, how they work. And so play with that. Go ahead and leave your questions and comments below. And I'll catch you in the next video.